Uh, hey YouTube, this is Justin coming back with another episode of Making Unusual Animal Art and talking about other interesting things. Tonight I'd just like to share with you um, just some things that I use in my process of making animal art. I'd like to begin with just talking about um, my reference material, what I use for reference material for my animal paintings. I tend to not like photographs. Um, as much as using models um, to do my paintings with. And I thought I'd just share with you briefly uh, some of the models that I use um, in my paintings. This is not a complete uh, listing or uh, showing of all the animals that I use, plastic animal models. Um, but I'll just share with you a couple that I have. Um, there's a Bengal tiger. There's a Rocky Mountain goat. There's a rabbit. There's a llama, there's a deer, there's some sheep, there's a lynx or a bobcat, and there's a tapir. Um, actually, the tapir is going to be featured uh, very soon in a painting that I'm working on based on a sketch that uh, Picasso did while he was in Barcelona. I'm using that for inspiration and using the tapir as a model. So these are just some of the basic um, examples of some models, animal plastic animal models that I've used in previous paintings and upcoming paintings also. And two main companies that I'm aware of that make plastic animal models for toys or for other interests um, is a German company, Schleich and Papo, Papio, that may be French. Um, I'm not sure, you know, pronunciation, but those are two of some of the major um, companies that make uh, plastic uh, animal models for toys or, you know, for other interests, I guess. Again, there's a tiger, Rocky Mountain goat. There's a little rabbit, a llama, and a deer, some common sheep, and again, a lynx or a bobcat, and a tapir. Um, so I thought I'd share that with you, and also I thought I'd like to mention uh, some of the other techniques or supplies that I use in uh, making my uh, animal art. Um, I've started using, again, uh, gesso, and that's a really uh, heavy-duty uh, pigmented white color. It's got a lot of uh, heavy pigment, and it's very opaque. And you can use that to apply on your canvas, and it just makes your uh, painting, uh, oil paints, um, really stick to the canvas better. Gives better adhesion. And the type of oil that I use, and I've been using this for a number of years, is a walnut oil. Artist grade walnut oil company. Um, is Art Tree House. Uh, there's also other companies um, that make walnut oil. M. Graham, I think, is, is another company that also makes paints. And then I've also recently started using um, New Waves Timber Pad. Um, that's a natural wood tone disposable paper palette um, for enhanced color gauging. It can really help you when you're trying to do your grayscale or learn how to judge color. It's very neutral, and you can get a rectangular model, handheld model, and it's tear and, and toss away easy. So when you're done painting for three or four hours and you're too tired to clean up, you know, you can simply um, throw away the um, palette. You know, you can tear it and toss it away, and it's easy to store, and you can use it with all paint media. So, you know, usually I will start again uh, with acrylic so I can use that with acrylic also so guys um, hope this was helpful um, you know looking at some of the supplies I use a timber pad by new wave some walnut oil walnut oil is really good because it's non-toxic and it doesn't let out those toxic fumes and you know with us being quarantined and you know with this situation with uh, the pandemic. Um, this is a new time for everyone experiencing uh, 
new times and uh, new tribulations. Um, hopefully the art will continue. And um, related to that, my trip to Paris uh, has been basically canceled. And I've um, realized uh, that, you know, there'll be another day, another time to experience that. And hopefully, you know, we all can, you know, get through these uh, interesting times, to say the least. Um, so with these, you know, supplies uh, mentioned to you, the gesso, the walnut oil, the timber pad, and again, going back to what I started with talking about these interesting animal models, they're all plastic. I don't know the scale. Um, you know, these are available online. You can find them locally, Hobby Lobby. I think Target used to sell some of these. Um, and this is just a very small sample. I used to have quite a few more, and I gave some to my kids and lost some through the way. But um, And as I mentioned, the main companies that I'm aware of that make these animal uh, models are Schleich and Papo, and they have a whole different series. Um, they do dinosaurs, farm animals, safari animals, you know, you name it, um, and they're really widely available, um, and then, of course, there's internet resources, and I really, again, like to use these because I think having a three-dimensional object or model is easier um, to paint from than, than a photograph, where, you know, finding the dimension and the intricacies of a photograph sometimes can be too hard to capture, where a plastic model, the lines are cleaner and simple and the faces I think are more direct and that really helps I think in painting to have a more direct style if you can and simple simplify the lines so guys thanks for watching um, I hope to be working on my tapir painting that I mentioned earlier and I wish you all the best thanks for viewing thanks